What's up guys, it's me, Bargain Bin Andrew Garfield, and we're back at it with another tier review. So, the plan is to tier list every Zombie Strike Blaster. So, we've got them all loaded up into the tier machine, and we're going to break them all down. Some winners, some losers, let's go! So we included a few extras, a little bit of reskin value this time, and what better place to start than with the rough cut from the Zombie Strike line. Now this was a rare blaster, it wasn't easy to get your hands on, and it was pretty fairly priced considering how you had to pick it up in a dual pack and you could frequently get it at a big box store, but it is still a rough cut. That said, still a rough cut is a fantastic blaster, so the rough cut is one of the best uh, dual like shot shotguns we've ever gotten. Hasbro's tried to improve on this from time to time, but the dual plunger, dual barrel, single trigger that does double action action is just fantastic. So I'm going to put this up here in B tier. I think that the elite version will score a little bit higher, but it is just a reskin. That said, it's still a rough cut. Rough cuts are fantastic. B tier. So coming in with a very similar set of internals, the Zombie Strike Brain Saw is just a rough cut that has a little bit extra to give. So it's got a foam chainsaw uh, where the front blade is a circle that spins and cuts into zombie baddies. And it's pretty comical because like you wouldn't want to actually use a giant hunk of plastic as a melee weapon, even if it does have a spinning foam tip on it. However, uh, still a rough cut, still excellent performance, and a lot of Zombie Strike flavor leaves this thing no better, no worse than the, the rough cut. I think that we're going to put it right next to it. They can be shoddy buddies. So the Sling Fire actually feeds into a secret theory that I have about this entire line, which is that I think this was in development during its R&D cycle as a Wild Wild West theme. And I have a lot of evidence to support that. And then they immediately jumped ship because marketing was like, hey, between humans versus zombies and The Walking Dead doing really well, I think the zombie thing is going to be big. And it clearly worked out for them. It's a perfect example of like corporate gear changing. That said, uh, the Zombie Strike Slingfire is one of the best blasters. In fact, all of the blasters that they were developing during that Wild West period, I think, are phenomenal blasters. They're really, really good in terms of their overall quality, construction, build, and purpose. So the Slingfire is a mare's leg style revolver. It lets you do Terminator tricks. It is beloved. It has a cult following. I'm a big fan of it my own self. I think it's got a great stock for signing when it comes to that. It's definitely A tier. Its performance isn't quite, uh, it's, it's right at elite levels of performance. It's also hard to modify because it's got a clutch inside made of super soft gears, but uh, stock form definitely A tier. You would think that the Dreadbolt being the biggest, baddest crossbow zombie strike is released would let you play out your Daryl Dixon fantasies to the extreme, but it doesn't. While they've definitely been pandering and catering to that Daryl Dixon character with these crossbow releases, this is easily the worst of all of them. The Dreadbolt is a terrible blaster. It uses their Rebel arrows, which while interesting in a unique arrow like ammo type, uh, are incredibly expensive and super easy to damage. Once they get bent, they never fire the same way ever again, and they get bent the first time you fire them. So that wouldn't be my biggest gripe with this, except it uses a series of locks and mechanisms that makes it almost impossible to fire reliably in used form. Out of the box, you're going to get six, maybe seven, like crisp, clean, good shots, but as soon as you put it down and pick it up, it is going to be dead on delivery, just like you if you try and run it in a war. This is a firm failure of a blaster. Not only is it incredibly expensive for what it is, it uses this proprietary ammo that is difficult to come by, and it barely functions. You need to do a series of modifications and lock removals just to get it functioning, and then once you've done all of that, it's still just giving you stringer-style performance. So I think that it's a great concept. It looks phenomenal. My buddy Aaron loves using it as a prop, but definitely F tier. Serious failure. Get it together, guys. Piggybacking off of that, the Wraith Bolt uses the same kind of ammo, has the same problems, but at least it has less lock. So uh, given that it's a smaller blaster, given that it's easier to chamber and access all of its internals, the Wraith Bolt is actually slightly better uh, coming in at E tier. It's still not a great blaster or a great decision. It's like a handheld pistol crossbow, uh, but for the price, you could get a real one and go like some sort of funky fishing with it if you wanted to. Uh, anyway, it's not a particularly good nerf blaster, but it's not quite as bad or as expensive a mistake as the Dreadbolt. We're going to put it in E tier. So the Duminator is a hard one to place. On one hand, it is a really high capacity primary class blaster. On the other hand, it is a super funky, very creaky 
sort of multi-cylinder, multi-shot uh, kind of blaster. And it's not bad. This kind of swapping of cylinders is definitely something that Zombie Strike has decided is part of its core design DNA. Uh, but it's really funky. It's a weird adaptation on what makes revolvers great, which is their elegance and simplicity. Uh, that said, it's not a bad blaster. It definitely functions correctly most of the time, and it becomes a really goofy, really fun kind of for pickup, easy to load off the field blaster. And I like using it. I like using it for like small zombie rounds. Uh, it's not a huge winner, but it's not a huge loser, and it's pretty fairly priced where it's at. I'm going to go ahead and throw it middle of the road at C tier. So it's no secret that I love the hammer shot. The hammer shot is to date one of the best pistols ever made. I think that it's better than the Kronos. It's definitely better than any of the elite revolvers that have ever been made. It's one hand primable hammer prime action definitely derives from an SAA definitely derives from like that wild wild west theme that I was talking about earlier, but it makes for a phenomenal pistol. The only thing holding this back from being the perfect nerf revolver is its five shot capacity and this super weird cloth wrap that they put on almost all of the Zombie Strike blasters. That said, there are solutions for both of those in the aftermarket, and this is the best nerf pistol around. If you pick up one blaster from this list, it should definitely be the Zombie Strike Hammer Shot. It is the most fun plinking revolver. It is a fantastic HVZ sidearm. No batteries required. Easy performance upgrades. Lots of kits available for it. This is my favorite revolver to, to side sling. I, I think it's S tier to the extreme. It looks good, it's affordable, it's compact, it's the Zombie Strike Hammer Shot, and it's definitely top of the pile at S tier. So yeah, it's a Jolt Reskin. It's a Zombie Strike colored Jolt Reskin. It comes with a funky attachable like targeting reticle up top. Uh, there's nothing super duper special about it, but it's priced like a Jolt, it looks like a Jolt. If it quacks like a Jolt, and walks like a Jolt, and talks like a Jolt, It'll still fit in your pocket. It'll still be your last ditch suicide shot for fighting those zombies. And uh, I'm going to throw it in C tier. All right, so if a jolt is C tier, then the clampdown is a more involved jolt. It's got more decoration. It's got a little handguard on it. And it's way more expensive than the regular jolts. So the question becomes, in a world with things like alpha strike jolts, in a world with things like super decorated micro shots, where does the clampdown go? And I think this one comes down to personal preference. Somebody could say that this remains at C tier because it looks really cool. I think that it would be hard pressed to move it any higher up the list. I actually am a super practical kind of nerfer. So I'm going to inject just a tiny bit of personal bias here for the first time. And I'm going to say that paying a whole lot extra for no real design improvement and just aesthetics like this uh, actually bumps you down a rank. So I think that the clampdown comes in at D tier. I don't want to pay extra money for what's basically a jolt. I feel the same way about micro shots, unless they're super cool. Speaking of improvements, uh, what do you call a hammer shot jolt hybrid? Well, you call it the double strike. While it only holds two rounds, it uses that fantastic hammer shot priming action. And so the super limited capacity and honestly, the super limited performance from that smart AR system really holds it back a little bit. But I still think it's sweet. I still think it makes for a great sidearm. I think that it's got a lot of cool body kits for it that turn it into super sweet sci-fi blasters. So I'm actually gonna bump it up from the Jolt one into B tier. So the Crossfire is our first attempt at marketing to those Daryl Dixon fanboys. And uh, it's not a bad blaster, but it's definitely not a good blaster. It takes advantage of what was at the time relatively new smart AR technology to provide four shots that are not string powered. It's like a pseudo stringer. It's also a pseudo primary, which is the term that I use for blasters that are too big to be a pistol, uh, but too lacking in either power or performance or features to be a primary. So this is neither nor. And uh, honestly, while it had a lot of good applications for me in terms of integrations back in the day, and will always have a soft spot in my heart because I could pick them up at Goodwill for next to nothing, and use them in all kinds of projects and borrow their handles and borrow their bow arms and all sorts of funky stuff like that. It's not a good blaster. It's actually a little bit below average. I'm going to put it in here at D tier. All right, so same concept, same performance, same equally bad execution. The Outbreaker bow is just an uglier, more complicated, much more zombie strike themed. It definitely has far more design that goes into it. It's got uh, more involved bow arms, it's got scissors for its pullback, but it's still 
a spring powered, not string powered pseudo stringer pseudo primary. It almost is an exact copy of the Crossfire bow, almost like they had to fill that sweet $20 retail spot with something that they make buku bucks off of. And I think that that's really all it is, is a rehashing of a similar idea. Now it does take the smart AR and turn it into a revolver for slightly more consistent performance, but it's consistently subpar performance. I don't quite want to bump it all the way down to E tier because I'm really trying to reserve E and F for blasters that you should never use, like real stinkers. So I'm going to leave it with its compatriot because I think that this is what it was designed to do. Uh, these two together forever in D tier. Now, as much as I want to call the Rev Reaper a bad blaster, my buddy Brian Hoffer would kill me if I put it anywhere less than C tier. And that's because he uses it to great effect and has actually brought me over. Like, I don't think it's a practical blaster. I don't think it's a good blaster. It's certainly not a performance-focused blaster, but the price is right. At only 17 18 bucks, you can pick these up off the shelves right now. You get flywheel-esque performance out of something that requires no batteries. It makes a ton of noise. It's got a super goofy magazine. But uh, as long as you're, like, going for goofy fun with a gimmick blaster, it's actually a blast. It's a super weird blaster to use. You're barely going to hit your targets. But uh, if you want a personal challenge, if you've really been hitting the, the track and you know what you're doing in an HVZ game, apparently this is a super fun blaster to pilot as your primary. So it can be done. It is magazine powered. You can use a lot of your gear with it. And ultimately, it's uh, not an ugly blaster. And it's got some translucent elements, which I think are a little cool. And it's got some sound elements. I'm going to give it to you, Hoffer. I'm going to leave it in B tier. I hope I don't regret this. So the side strike's actually a super funky pistol. It's very interesting. It reminds me of almost like the Nerf Scout in that I actually think it's pretty good. There's nothing particularly wrong with it. It's a single shot pistol with a built in slide and an ultra tiny set of internals, but you're expecting lower performance from something like that. And it came with a holster. That is so cool. Nerf, more blasters that come with holsters, please because your partners seem to struggle sometimes with making those blaster holsters that actually fit things. So the fact that this is a shell molded blaster holster is actually pretty sweet. And I think really bumps this thing up. So uh, it's a poor performance blaster, which should put it subpar, but it comes with a fantastic, one of the best accessories ever. And it's got some of my favorite features. So I'm actually gonna put it a little bit above average. It's definitely not a jolt. I'm gonna give it B tier. The Zombie Strike Ripshot is an embarrassment of a blaster. The Zombie Strike Ripshot is supposed to be a Jolt Vortex blaster, but it doesn't work. You need to take advantage of the Vortex ammo in things like the magazine capacity and the overall ammo that you can throw down range, creating a wall of floating discs. This is a bad blaster. It's single shot, no onboard storage. It's overpriced for what it is. I'm going to let you guys in on my secret theory. I think that all of the Zombie Strike Vortex Blasters exist because there were some serious supply issues with reload packs to blaster ratio, but I think that everything got botched. I think that the timing was off on all of it. And so you wind up with blasters that are completely discordant to the Zombie Strike theme and ethos that I think existed solely to sell refill packs and didn't even accomplish that because there weren't blasters worth buying to reload uh, at the time. So. I think that the Vortex line is great. I would love to do a tier list for the Vortex line. If you want me to do a tier list for the Vortex line, leave me a comment down below. Uh, I'm still trying to decide which one of these I'm going to do next, but uh, this blaster is terrible. This is a complete failure. It goes down in F tier. So utilizing the same performance as the Ripshot, Ripshot Ricochet. <laughs> you guys have to imagine making a video like this it becomes so incredibly clear that they're just using a random name generator to pull all of these product names out of a hat over at uh over in Pawtucket because it's it's unreal how these names get jumbled up and jumbled together making a video like this with all of the names in front of you all the time is very very confusing it's almost humorous so the Ripshot has only one improvement over the Ricochet, and it's not enough to save it from the bottom of the barrel. It has some onboard ammo storage for Vortex discs that you have to pull out but still front load. Uh, it's no better. Um, it's essentially a Vortex jolt, but it doesn't perform very well. Uh, it does have a much more ergonomic sort of styling to it. I would love to bump it up to E tier, but it's just not good enough for E tier. It goes down in the failure category 
with its Vortex pseudo brethren. Now the only saving grace, the shining light if you will, to this zombie strike monstrosity afterthought is the fuse fire. The fuse fire has built in lights and glow discs which I think are just awesome and that's how you take advantage of a unique ammo type and that's how you do something cool. It's got an internal magazine which admittedly I missed in my preliminary review. Someday I'll go back and give this blaster the props it deserves, uh, but I think that it's a sweet one. It's probably, like, it's not a performance piece by any stretch of the imagination, but it has onboard capacity. It's got an easy-to-reload sort of mechanism. It uses a lot of the features from Vortex that I thought were super-duper cool in the pullback and fire sort of mechanism, and it lights up, charges all the glow discs, and fires them. I think that it's sweet. I'm going to give it C-tier. Uh, I don't think I'm going to regret that. It's not quite like as good as some of these top end blasters, but it's definitely not a bad blaster right up there with the pseudo primaries. The Quadrot is pretty new and essentially has the same sort of internals as the Crossfire and performance to match. It's a four dart stacked smart AR system in a pistol with a pullback and a spring, not a string. That's important uh, because that sort of gives us an idea of where it goes, but it's not trying to be something it isn't. It's definitely a sidearm. It's priced like a sidearm. It performs like a sidearm. It's compact. It's close to the vest. It reminds me a lot of the Alpha Strike Fang. In a lot of ways, it's a more expensive Alpha Strike Fang, but it just goes to show you that like a compact Ford Art Smart AR sidearm that fits in your back pocket and lays flush to the body is pretty sweet. This would be easy to holster. It's got good zombie strike DNA. I think that it's a little bit better than its uh, actual internal counterpart, and so I'm going to put it up here in C tier. So let's talk about the Zombie Strike Rip Chain, because it's a really weird design choice and kind of shows that the Zombie Strike line has been all over the place, and it seems like they just sort of pigeonhole ideas into this line, throw a little bit of Zombie Strike DNA in it, and publish. So uh, I thought that Hasbro left chains back in the 90s. Dart Zone does chains really well in modern terms, but uh, Hasbro's last good chain blasters were like sci-fi themed? I feel so uh, maybe the Vulcan the Vulcan was pretty iconically cool so uh, this is not the Vulcan however this is not a particularly great blaster the chain uh, gets tangled and caught on things and goes everywhere it's almost too large for the blaster you can kind of see it here drooping down looking super silly uh, I think that this is a D tier blaster I think that it would be a C tier blaster if the chain was either smaller or if the blaster was larger to accommodate it, or if it had a slightly more like ergonomic sort of feel to it. But uh, I, I don't know, I think that chain guns should be chain guns and this is really funky, so D tier. So while I think that the brain saw is a pretty big win and the cross cut should be as well because it comes from a double strike and you'd think that it would go right here next to this bad boy, uh, the cross cut is not quite as cool as the double strike. The double strike's primary attribute is that it's almost like a Derringer. <laughs> It's easy to pocket, it's got good performance for its size, and this kind of ruins that. It's an oversized double strike, and it loses the coolest part, which is that you can go pop, pop with a double strike. This you can't do that with. You have to use the weird as heck uh, pull tab soda sort of thing to fire this one. Now you get a secondary trigger, which gives you a funky buzzsaw sort of thing going on, so it's not terrible. It's also not overpriced, it's pretty fairly uh, under that $20 category, leaving it as a funky sort of pistol. So this one isn't a pseudo primary, this one is a pseudo pistol, and again, I don't actually like encouraging people to fight one another with spinning foam discs attached to hunks of plastic. So, uh, I think that this is slightly under the brain saw in the double strike. I'm gonna put it in here with C tier. It's still an okay double shot pistol, but honestly, for the size, you want more shots, something more like the Quadrot. Uh, over here, it just, it, it is what it is. So surely in a world where zombies are attracted to noise, the silent strike blowgun would be high on the list, right? Because it'll stealth attack them into submission. But uh, no, the zombie strike uh, blowgun has the same problems as every blowgun Hasbro has ever developed, which is they don't have a safe mouthpiece. So like this one fits right in there with the Apollo where it's going to lose a lot of points uh, because it's dangerous. Now, um, I want to point out that you can buy a blowgun for about like a dollar or less at your hardware store just using half inch PVC. Do I recommend that? No. 3D print something that goes between your teeth, your chiclets, and the hard piece of plastic that you are about to blow air through to fire darts. It's cool. I've got a ton of respect for HVZ blowgunners. I've never been one. I particularly like back when instead of using 
Uh, the thick wall that we use now, they use the thin wall so that they could shoot taggers. I thought that that was pretty fantastic, or whistlers, because then they weren't silent, and that was really cool too. Uh, this blaster is borderline dangerous, and for $10, you're paying literally 1,000% as much as you would at Home Depot or Lowe's for the exact same performance, possibly even worse, uh, because you want it to say uh, Nerf on it. And I, I don't agree with these products uh, from an ethical perspective. I certainly don't agree with them from a safety commission perspective. Uh, I've, I've dealt with way too many skateboarders who have lost their chiclets to encourage anyone to participate in an active sport or game while running around holding something in their mouth. So uh, I think that for the purpose that I'm hoping that Hasbro like kind of pitched this as, which is a sitting down in your dorm room and shooting cups across the room in a, a very safe way to use this, this hard piece of plastic, uh, I'm just trying to decide between E and F. And I think that in good conscience, it has to be an F. It's just a huge miss on all cylinders. And I will reiterate that if I ever work up the courage to do an elite one of these, that blowgun's going in F tier two. The Zombie Strike Sledge Fire has a lot of power. Massive plunger tube, really cool gimmick, and we've been 3D printing custom shells for it long before the Spring Thunder was gracing our modded halls. So I think that the Sledge Fire is a really powerful blaster. It's the likes of which that we just don't get that often in a world without big bad bows. And it had a unique priming system. The shells that it came with were cool. We could 3D print extra ones. Some people were making extra ones. You could create slug shells that fired a single dart very far, very hard. Uh, the boys down in Australia at Make Test Battle have an amazing guide for making an even more powerful version of this. Like overall, I think that it is a solid, solid contender. I really, really like this blaster. I like using it. The only thing I don't like about it is losing the shells. Uh, which does happen. Any shelled blaster, you have to find more of, but I'm pretty sure they sold a reload pack for it at some point, although these days you should just go on Thingiverse. Uh, I think that it's an A-tier blaster. Uh, it's not quite S-tier. S-tier is like just for the top of the top, uh, but this is sweet. So unlike its Zuru knockoff, the Flip Fury actually has a very satisfying click. It ratchets into place almost every time flawlessly, and it does so automatically with the use of its secondary trigger. The Flip Fury is like a better strong arm. Uh, we were doing things like this with polycarbonate and extra Maverick cylinders and making some really cool stuff way back in the day, but uh, the golden age is gone and now Hasbro is injection molding a far crisper, far cleaner, designed to actuate multi-cylinder revolver. And it's everything that I like about the Duminator, but in a compact pseudo pistol package. But this one's, there's no pseudo about it. Like this is a cool pistol to use. I think that it's a ton of fun. Uh, it is still a little funky, but uh, it's definitely above average. I think it goes in B tier. It's not quite as good as like the sling and the sledge, but it's a really sweet pistol, a ton of fun to use, gives you 12 shots of onboard capacity and allows you to reload on the fly. The Revoltinator may be new, it may just be a Strife reskin, but just a Strife reskin is awesome. And also I want to point out that while it might not have full auto, the Revoltinator has lights and sounds in a way that no other Zombie Strike Blaster has taken advantage of this space. It's the only electronic Zombie Strike Blaster, and it's actually quite sweet. So I never thought that they'd go electronic with Zombie Strike. I thought that the whole point was to be things that could be cobbled together in a secret base while the zombies broke in out of your dad's shed. That said, the Revoltinator captures that aesthetic and delivers on all cylinders. It's got firing spark plugs. It's got cool lights and sounds. And I think... Just the play elements of that alone, combined with the fact that it has one of the best sort of functional modifiable internal sets in our hobby period, uh, puts this actually in S tier. I'm going to give the Revoltinator as the Strife reskin de jure uh, S tier privileges because I think that these are going to be really sweet and I am so incredibly stoked to crack mine open for you guys on my Twitch, modify it up, paint it up and make something that looks straight out of COD Zombies. We're gonna pack a punch the heck out of this. It's no secret that I like semi-auto springers a whole, whole lot. I was a huge fan of the Alien Menace version of this, and the Snapfire 8 will always be near and dear to my heart. It's a fantastic mechanism that Hasbro pulls out of their bag of tricks every once in a while, and that is the ability to prime and fire a spring-powered plunger with one action. It is ridiculously cool, and because of that, because of my fondness for it, because I love watching chicken dual wield them in HVZ, I think that the nail biter has to be A tier. 
I know that some people are going to disagree with that pick, but it's just such a unique, such a cool mechanism in our hobby that it's got to be above all of the other pistols that I've given props for their slightly unique things that are nowhere near as unique and cool. Also, Hasbro's the only one doing it right now, which is pretty special. The Scravenger is unfortunately an overhyped, overpromised, and underdelivering knockoff of the Sling Fire. What we wanted in a super sweet, complete with Slam Fire, Sling Fire upgrade becomes a nightmare of ergonomics, with accessories that only go on upside down or backwards, a hideous litany of includes that you have to pay for but won't look good on anything else, like... I think that the Scravenger is actually a pretty big miss. I don't like its ergos. I don't like that the pistol that goes into the stock always seems to fall off every time I use it. So I'm going to put it down in D tier. If it was fairly priced, it would make C tier as just a middle of the road easy uh, include, but uh, it goes in D tier. And this list goes to show you overall just how special that rival list was overperforming consistently in their category. This is a much more consistent bell curve with things like uh, in B tier, certainly skewed, but with most blasters falling somewhere in the middle, having a pro and a con, something cool, and then something that holds them back or a weird design choice, I think that Zombie Strike for the longest time was kind of the home of the weird design choices. So uh, please let me know in the comment section down below. Do you disagree with any of my picks? If so, which ones? If so, why? Uh, and then please, 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 please don't forget to turn on my notifications, smash subscribe, hit the bell. There's going to be more tier lists coming. I just need to know from you in those comments which one you are most pumped about. Uh, they're actually kind of tough to edit together, I discovered, with the rival one. So I'm sure by the time this is said and done, there will be a lot of editing in this one. Making the custom memes is a ton of fun. But uh, you guys know that I love ranking these blasters. It's actually a really cool thought exercise. So I will, uh, I'll see you guys next time on the next one. We'll probably be doing that a uh, revoltinator modification on twitch live at some point we're on an eight day twitch live stream streak so be sure you check me out over there at twitch.tv backslash vampire drag and i will see you guys next time much love nerf on drag out